George thought it was a great day for the county fair and sheep competition. Oh, I'm so excited, George. Grandpa's in the sheepdog competition. Ooh. And he's not even a sheepdog. Oh. Let's hurry. It's almost time for the final round. It was hard for George and Allie to hurry at a spring fair. There were tractors to play on and prize-winning turnips to admire. <laughs> there was even a barber shop for sheep. <laughs> Don't worry, George. The sheep's hair will grow back. Besides, now that summer's coming, the sheep wants to get rid of that heavy coat. <laughs> George figured all that sheep hair was being taken to a trash can, but the farmer had other plans. <laughs> a sheep's hair is called wool, and after you wash it, you comb it out, Dye it. Ooh. Then spin it into yarn and use it to make things like sweaters, socks, and blankets. So people help sheep stay cool in the summer, and sheep help people stay warm in the winter. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong guess. Now George wondered how to whistle, come back. Another wrong guess. George was suddenly wishing he'd paid more attention at the sheepdog competition. He tried every whistle he could think of to get Bo to turn the sheep around. None of them was right. Been a slow day today. You were saying? <laughs> Never mind. The sheep ended up at George's house. <laughs> Hi, George. Anything interesting happen while I was gone? Um, uh... Oh, no. George? <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Rankins. Yes, we have your sheep, and they're all safe. George, could you get those sheep away from the tuba? Go on, go on. Boy, am I grateful. That storm blew a bunch of trees down in the pasture. If George hadn't found shelter for the sheep, they might have gotten hurt. Hey, huh? you hear that, George? You're a hero, monkey. <laughs> We went to a friend's to get a thank you gift. Allie knew just what you wanted. Wool! And lots of it. We can dye it any color you want. <laughs> I'll teach you how to knit. You'll have a new scarf in no time. <laughs> and that was how George not only made a new scarf for himself, but also one for the man with the yellow hat. Scarf. And I think you picked the right color. <laughs> Today was a busy day at George's apartment. Professor Wiseman was coming to dinner, and the man with the yellow hat wanted everything to be just right. I have an idea. Why don't I finish getting the apartment ready and you go to the store? 
great. Let's make a list. Okay. Okay, I need carrots for my famous carrot cake. <laughs> Cucumbers for my famous cucumber soup. <laughs> and uh, apples for my famous uh, bowl of apples. Here's a bag and some money, George, and have fun. Bye-bye. <laughs> it is eggplant. So what did you put in the carrot cake? <laughs> is, it, is this some kind of radish? Radish cake and eggplant soup and a... Smelly fruit bowl. <laughs> Interesting. George couldn't understand it. How could something that tasted so good in the store taste so bad in the soup? I'm sure you could make a good soup with eggplant, but this was a recipe for cucumber soup. <laughs> <laughs> well, we still have, oh, 10 minutes. Oh, well, I guess we should just order takeout. Huh? But uh, where are you going, George? <laughs> Customer number one, you are back. And I think I know why. You dropped this on your last visit. Uh. Correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't these pictures of carrots, cucumbers, and apples? <laughs> yeah, I see it now. Way to go, Dad. Tell me, my friend, are those the vegetables you have been looking for on your visits? <laughs> Let me get them for you. <laughs> you don't want them? <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh. Oh, nothing like a hard day of analyzing carbon isotope ratios to give a girl an appetite. Hmm, something smells weird. Oh, that's my uh, radish cake. Really? Yum. George, <laughs> perfect uh -huh. timing. George, is that your name? Uh-huh. Hello. I am Win Kuang An, owner of the Hua Mai Grocery and Takeout. This is my wife, Hua, and daughter, Mai. Oh, well, hello. Hi. He named the store after us. It means peach blossom. Is that the new Vietnamese grocery on Inn Avenue? I've been looking forward to your opening. Oh, me too. Is all this from your store? It is. We thought we should help George carry in his order. We brought you eggplant curry, bun tit nung with nook kiam, a fish sauce with daikon radish. Ooh, I love that sauce. Bitter melon soup, sa hat lo, which is pomegranate seeds in coconut cream and durian shakes. Mmm, it all looks great. And there's so much. Uh, would you join us? Huh? We would be honored. <laughs> A few days later, George headed back to Hua Mai. Ooh. Here you go. Ah. Hi, look at all our takeout customers. Someone's been talking. Me. I told everyone I know about how great the food is, and I know a lot of people. Don't worry, George. You'll always be customer number one. <laughs> In spring, good gardeners can't wait to get things growing. <laughs> Need any more help? OK. I have to go help Professor Wiseman design a new terrarium. Bye, George. George had his seed system set. First, he dug a hole, then he planted some seeds, 
then he covered the hole. Huh? I heard a guy named Quixote opened a new bakery up ahead. Hungry? It was the biggest pinwheel George had ever seen. Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> it's a windmill. Ooh. Yup, <laughs> it grinds my grain for me. <laughs> Let me show you how it works. When the wind blows, it pushes the sails. Just like wind pushes a sailboat along the water. But since sails are attached to the mill, instead of moving forward, they spin around. Ooh. <laughs> Some people use windmills to make electricity. Ah. I use mine to make flour and butter. Well, I'll be. What do you think, George? That's the butter churner. Those stones grind the grain into flour for bread. Bread and butter go together like, well, <laughs> bread and butter. Mm. That is pretty amazing. My windmill? Mm, no, your butter. I, I didn't know a windmill could do that. Oh, you could use a windmill to move just about anything. Yes, this one's a pepper mill. George could push his sails, but the wind couldn't. Mr. Coyote's sails were stiff. Maybe that gave the wind more to push against. <laughs> so George made his sail stiff. <laughs> All his windmill needed now was a scarecrow mover. Last, his windmill was finished. And it was a good thing, too. Huh? Because he was out of tape. Now he just had to wait for the wind. <laughs> and get a wait for his windmill. Scarecrow move. But he did feel bad for Compass and his friends. <laughs> now the pigeons could eat their food while George grew his. George's friend Allie really flipped for flips, even when she wasn't doing the flipping. Did you see that? Yeah. Uh -huh. The annual gymnastic tournament was right up Allie's alley. Next year, that's going to be me. <gasps> Here comes another one. The gymnastic tournament was for gymnasts of all ages. There were girl gymnasts and boy gymnasts. And. 
A bug gymnast? <laughs> Next up is the bundle of dynamite. George? Uh, uh, on the floor, Matt. <laughs> well, uh, I mean the balance beam. Oh. Uh, well, I, I guess I mean the uneven parallel bars. Or do I? Uh, I mean, George, on the, the rings uh, there. Uh, I give up. He didn't mean to disrupt things. You are a natural born gymnast. You've got to come to my gymnastics class. Huh? Oh. You teach gymnastics? I want to come too. Me too. Really? Do you know how strong your arms have to be to do gymnastics? Imagine how far a guy could throw a newspaper. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. See you at the community center tomorrow for an introduction to the class. Three o'clock. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <gasps> Maybe you should do abominable exercises. They make your muscles stronger. Yeah. Uh. Eight. Nine. <clears throat> ten. <gasps> One more than ten. Two more than ten. Now, we need a pommel horse. Oh. That was going to be a tough one. Oh. It'd have to be the right height. <laughs> Too short. Too tall. And it shouldn't tilt. <laughs> Once George had a handle on things, he added padding because safety is one of the three S's. Yes! Way to go, George! Ah, ah. Wow, you guys built this yourselves? Well, it was George's idea. He's pretty smart for a city kid. Yeah, and wait till Mrs. Somersault sees us next week. We're gonna be so gymtastic! At the next class, George couldn't wait to show the teacher what they had learned. Gymtastic? You certainly are, but how? <laughs> we found another gym. Yeah, and it's open every day. <gasps> every day? Do you think maybe we could have classes there? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. We know the owner. And <laughs> he's a natural at gymtastics. <laughs> It was George's first spring day back in the country. <laughs> and already, he was starring in a movie. Hiya, Mr. Rankins. Yeah. Hi, Bill. George? Okay, George. You go in first and see if there are any baby ducks running around. <laughs> I'll follow with my camcorder. <laughs> this will make a great scene for my science project about baby animals. 
This is Bill, bringing you baby ducks, live from the Rankin's Bar. for example, come as eggs. <laughs> yep, Dumpling's babies will hatch from these eggs, as long as she sits on them to keep them warm. <laughs> Sprouts on her, George. If she doesn't sit on them, they'll get cold and never hatch. <laughs> oh, my battery died. I'll have to get another one. Don't let the eggs hatch without me, okay? Where was Dumpling going? She was supposed to be keeping her eggs warm. Why are you sitting on a nest of duck eggs? <laughs> it looks like he's trying to keep Dumpling's eggs warm. Wow! I don't believe it. A duck is hatching right before my very eyes, on camera. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Rankins, you don't want to miss this. Your ducks are hatching. We'll, we'll be, be right, right there. there. <laughs> Hooray for the dumpling. <laughs> oh, I should get this on tape. You're watching Dumpling Duck saving her baby like only a mother duck can. And so, the ducklings were brought together by this daring rescue and by the kid from the city who helped to hatch them. Fantastic! <laughs> 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 Saturday was a day when monkeys and men with yellow hats return books and get new ones. A whole building full of books. What could be better than that, huh, George? Yeah. Are you excited to get a new book, George? Yeah. Adventurous Henry is one of my favorites, too. Maybe you should check it out again. Yeah. It's called Renewing a Book. People do it all the time. George was thrilled because the man with the yellow hat had only read the book to him 18 times. That's strange. I don't see the librarian. Mrs. Dewey? Huh. I'm right here. Hey. Oh, there you are. Sorry for the mess. My work keeps stacking up. 
Uh, George would like to renew a book, please. I sure wish I had someone to help out today. Something tells me George is available. That's stupendous! Thank you, George. George, I have some research to do. Will you be all right here by yourself? <laughs> well, then I'll be back in a few hours. Be a good little monkey librarian. <laughs> George had fixed the library again. George, what happened? The books are all messed up. Huh? Come here, I'll show you. <laughs> this is where all the outer space books are supposed to be. But instead, you've got uh, bunny books, train books, bug books, pink pony books. Ah, uh, where are all the outer space books? <laughs> George tried to explain to Steve how he had organized all the books. <laughs> Did you arrange all the books by size? <laughs> that's amazing! But I don't think that's the way libraries work. <laughs> See, outer space books are supposed to go on this shelf. And books about dinosaurs go on that shelf. And all the other books, uh, I don't know where they go. Hmm. George wondered, if outer space books all go together, and dinosaur books all go together, well, then maybe train books go with other train books, no matter what size or color they are. Yeah, train books probably go together. Uh -huh. Hey, I get it. Maybe all the books are organized by subject. Cool. Ah, uh, yeah, you've got a lot of rearranging to do. But don't worry, I'll help. You're back in the right order. Great job, you hairy librarian. <laughs> I'm back, George. My, it looks neat as a pin in here. All the books are back where they should be, on the shelves according to their subject. Uh, right? Well, mostly right. Books are typically arranged by subject, then by author alphabetically. Oh. <laughs> Except storybooks. They go together by author. <laughs> I'm sure I can put things right in no time. Great. <laughs> Sounds like you did a great job, George. Hey, maybe you'd like to help out at the library every Saturday. <laughs> Helping Mrs. Dewey was fun, but exhausting. Yoo-hoo, George! You forgot your book! <laughs> On the other hand, only a librarian would give you Adventurous Henry for another two weeks. What could be better than that? <laughs> there are those who appreciate a clean lobby. And then there's George. <sighs> okay, go straight in and run a bath, George. Hello? Oh, Professor Wiseman. Oh, yes, that does sound serious. Ah. Only one octopus? Ah. <laughs> hey, George. Ah. I have to go help Professor Wiseman. Don't forget about that bath. George decided that the best thing to do was to put all his toys in the tub. <laughs> Hi, 
Leave a message when you hear the... George? Hello? Is anyone there? I just wanted to make sure you saw that orange fly eye slipped under your door. We have to shut off all the water at 4 o'clock, which is... now! I'm going in! George couldn't believe it. The apartment didn't have any water either. Huh. How was he ever going to get clean? Yep, to get to water, all you have to do is dig a well. <laughs> George didn't know how long his apartment would be without water, so he figured he might as well start digging. George ran the hose from the bathtub down to his well. How could George attach the hose to the baster? The water came into the baster from the bottom, so George needed some way to connect the hose to the side. Hmm. Maybe this would work. <coughs> With duct tape, anything was possible. Water was going up the straw. At this rate, George would have his bathtub filled in no time. Except the well was out of water. George had to dig a deeper hole. George had struck the mother load of water. Water spurting up 20 feet in the middle of the city? Not a good sign. See, the whole reason we turned the water off was to figure out why we were losing pressure. <sighs> Turns out the water main leading to the building had a crack in it. I still don't know how George discovered the water main or the crack, but it's a good thing you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, George, you haven't looked this clean in days. <laughs> when you take a bath, you really take a bath. <laughs> When the man with the yellow hat told George he was bringing home a wondrous animal called a chameleon, George decided to surprise it with a gift. Hi, George. <laughs> That's terrific. It looks just like Jade. Take a look. <laughs> yeah, Professor Wiseman and I rescued her when she lost her jungle home. She's, uh, there. See? Huh? Look, she's changing color. Ooh. Chameleons can do that. See, she's usually green like her jungle surroundings, and that's why we named her Jade. But under the sun's rays, she got warmer, and that made her change color. Watch. Chameleons change color when the temperature changes. <laughs> and sometimes when their mood changes, too. Anyway, today Jade will get a new home at the zoo. That is, if I can convince Dr. Chroma 
that she's the kind of rare chameleon he's been looking for. Oh. Yep, I I've already prepared my speech. Now I just need to pick up some posters. Hey, do you want to feed Jade while I'm gone? Uh -huh. Oh, great, her food's on the table. Uh, just drop in a few pieces and she'll do the rest. Thanks, George. Bye-bye. George had left the cage open. <laughs> the popcorn popper was warm. But Jade wasn't there. The vegetable barbecue also had heat, but it didn't have Jade. place that George had missed? <laughs> now all George had to do was put Jade back in her cage. was gone. That meant that the man had taken Squeaky to the zoo instead of Jade. Hey, George, what's the rush? Uh, sounds exciting. Well, hop on. Meanwhile, the man with the yellow hat had just finished telling the dramatic story of Jade's rescue. And now I would like to examine Jade. If she is the rare chameleon that you say, then, and only then, can she stay. Well, of course. <coughs> uh, squeaky? What was that sound? What? The squeak? Oh, um, hey, let's all go to lunch, huh? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm starving. The chameleon, please. Show me the chameleon! No. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> George? Hello. Let me see. Hmm. Oh, oh. Well, it's... Well, perhaps... Yes! This is the chameleon we've been hoping for! Oh, welcome, Jade, to the zoo. George thought Professor Wiseman's beach house was great. This time, it was even greater because George had brought Yorbo, the friendliest robot ever. Searching, searching, searching. I can. Found. Your bow is great, yes? <laughs> Your bow's next job was to help George and the man with the yellow hat pack a lunch for the beach. Oh, no, not. Look out! <laughs> oh, sorry, George. I I'm listening to an audiobook, The Slimy Sea Monster from the Sea. It's great and scary. George didn't understand how something could be great and scary. <sighs> Thanks. Uh -huh. Now, are you ready for a long hike to the beach? Uh -huh. Ta-da! Oh, I hope we don't run into any slimy sea monsters. <laughs> now take the radio and switch it to AM. Okay. Then turn the knob all the way to the highest radio station number, but make sure you get static and not an actual station. Turn up the volume, then turn on the calculator and tape it to the radio. <laughs> Fantastic. You 
You see, the radio and calculator act as a magnet. When it finds things that would stick to a magnet, the radio beeps. <laughs> That's amazing. I can't believe you knew that. Well, how do you think I won first place in my second grade science fair? George was confused. He had already searched half the beach. But which half? If only the beach were smaller. Then George remembered tic-tac-toe. He could break up the beach into smaller sections, like a tic-tac-toe board. If George could mark off the squares he searched, then he'd know where he'd looked and where he needed to look. Ah. <laughs> Hi, George. <laughs> You want to make a grid to help you keep track of your search? <laughs> oh, great idea, George. All set. Let me know if you need anything. <laughs> if George searched every square, then he'd be sure to find your boat. <laughs> In square number four, George found a trumpet. In square six, George found a front grill to a 57 Cadillac. But by square number eight, there was still no sign of your bow. No luck, huh? Your bow had to be in this last square. He had to. I can get back to the thrilling conclusion of my book. Oh well. Wait for me! <laughs> On sunny, snowy days... Oh. <sighs> oh. George usually got up bright and early. he discovered that Bill had gotten up even brighter and earlier. Hey, George! Hey! Oh, huh. Snow blocks. I'm building a house out of snow, although the correct term is igloo. <laughs> yep. I'm trying to earn my sprout badge in winter camping. And to do that, I have to build an igloo and sleep in it overnight. Ooh. Suddenly, that was exactly what George wanted to do. Build an igloo and sleep in it, just like Bill. <laughs> you want to help me? <laughs> and sleep in the igloo, too? <laughs> Why not? Let's get started. <laughs> George had really wanted to spend the night in an igloo. <sighs> and maybe he still could. He could build his igloo right inside the house. A smaller igloo. It was nice and warm. George figured he'd better turn down the thermostat so his igloo wouldn't melt. <laughs> oh, oh, it's 
freezing. Oh, I must have turned the heat down too low. Wow, the heat is off. No wonder it's so cold. Oh. Seven o'clock. The badge is mine. Ow! We did it, George. Uh oh, George. Oh, hi, Bill. Are you sitting down? Um, no. Okay, I don't want to alarm you, but George is not in his igloo. Don't worry, he's probably upstairs and... Oh. What? Oh, boy. George! Uh, George, why is there a melted igloo in the living room? Uh-huh. You were cold outside, so you thought you'd build an igloo inside. Uh -huh. huh. Makes sense. For a city kid. As the Sprout Master of Sprout Troop number 674, I am proud to present Bill with his badge in winter camping. Uh -huh. Wow! There. And now, George and I would like to invite you all to a little celebration. <laughs> George's igloo might be too cold for sleeping, but it was just right for a party. Hey, George. Got any ice for the punch? <laughs> <laughs> the start of the Monkey Igloo Social Club. Open every weekend until it melted in the spring.